stage six load shedding continues to wreak havoc on businesses and households, while South Africans have not held back to express their dissatisfaction with the current situation and their cynicism around what effect President Ramaphosa's decision to cancel his trip to the World Economic Forum in Switzerland will have in addressing the crisis in the immediate term. One sector that has been under pressure due to the power constraints situation has been the manufacturing sector, and no doubt that has intensified even further. Philippa Rosteth, uh, she's uh, from the Manufacturing Circle. She joins us now to just give us a sense of the impact thus far. Very good afternoon, Philippa. So the manufacturing sector has had to endure load shedding for quite some time now, but I guess that last week with the sudden overdrive uh, to uh, load shedding stage six, things have become a lot worse. What's been the impact? What are your members saying? In essence, reliable energy supply is absolutely essential for our manufacturers to be able to operate efficiently and competitively. Uh, we must remember that many of the manufacturers across different subsectors run or need to run continuous production processes. So that's metals for extrusions, for example, but also um, um, has relevance in, in across food and beverages, paper and pulp, chemicals. So this increase in um, the load shedding frequency, um, as well as um, unpredictability, is significantly impacting on the sector. Um, we see increased um, uh, wastage, um, lost production time. So that negatively impacts on, um, on revenue. And at the same time, a, a lot of overheads need to be maintained. Um, in the manufacturing sector, we have a skilled labor force. So um, those overheads still need to be um, um, adhered uh, or, or covered. Um, so really, um, you know, the, the, the increase in the um, load shedding um, compounded by um, the, the, the um, publicized increase in tariffs is definitely uh, making uh, it very difficult for the manufacturing sector to operate on a competitive basis. And as the manufacturing circle, this really concerns us in that um, an inability to, to operate competitively means that we can lose a lot of our local production to either imports. Um, and it also makes us less able to export because in order to export by default, our products need to be competitive. So really, um, you know, that, that could tend towards a, a um, vicious demand cycle in that our manufacturers are less able to produce competitively. Um, we lose the ability to do so. Um, and in so doing, um, you know, there's, there's less investment, yeah. uh, less jobs provided. So, Philippa, have you as a manufacturing circle or as industry, manufacturing industry, reached out to ESCOM around how it can best accommodate the sector to enable it to be more productive under the current circumstances? The manufacturing circle, as well as other industry associations, um, has been engaging with ESKIM um, at a strategic level for the last two years um, in a very um, proactive way. In 2021, the Manufacturing Circle Electricity Forum has uh, started engaging with uh, ESKIM's executives um, in, in, in quite a detailed way to better understand the state that we're in and the way forward and what it is that we can do from a practical perspective to bridge the gap between uh, supply and demand. Particularly from the perspective of manufacturers, electricity uh, specifically and energy more broadly is, is so important because um, you know, on the supply side, we need uh, reliable, efficient supply. And also, if we get, um, you know, it right in terms of what it needs, what needs to be built from a renewable energy perspective, um, from a um, grid uh, perspective, from a transmission line perspective, that also offers offers demand side opportunities for local manufacturers. We have a lot of competencies um, across transformers, um, uh, power pylons, conductors, balance of the plants and like. Um, so, so during those um, uh, engagements, we've been looking um, 
first and foremost at um, industrialists and manufacturers and, and what is it that they can do in the short term to be more efficient with the energy and, and electricity that they do use, given that um, you know there's, there's less of it and, and it's more expensive. So those are um, certain practical interventions that are being considered. Also, um, from a supply side to the, the manufacturers, where are the alternative sources? Um, noting, for example, diesel generators, but also um, uh, highlighting that it, that is generally more expensive um, than, than um, electricity in some cases. So that can lead to increase in operational costs um, and also some um, energy uh, consumption requirements, um, diesel generation, can simply not um, provide what is what is needed. And then also obviously to, to talk to new renewables. Also, um, you know, on the transmission development plan, we know that there are constraints from a transmission perspective. Um, the, the current grid is, is constrained, particularly when we look at the large renewable energy projects that are to be um, developed. And um, once they come online, you know, we also need, um, a, 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 we need additional um, grid. So, um, you know, we know there's a transmission development plan. We know that there's what well, was 8,000 kilometers. Now we're looking at 14,000 kilometers of transmission line that need to be built. What is it that we can do as um, manufacturers and industry to better understand and have visibility of those project plans um, so that we can see where we can um, actively uh, participate. And then last but not least, we mustn't forget the relationship with the municipalities. Um, in the cases where um, uh, companies are not supplied directly by ESKIM, but via municipalities. And there, that adds another level of complexity as far as um, lack of service delivery is concerned. And what is it that industry can do and what role can industry play in um, uh, being more proactive in, in, in the municipalities in terms of what is required from a, um, a maintenance uh, perspective, because yeah. we simply are not finding the, the service delivery yeah. um, uh, being sufficient in that regard. Philippa, thank you very much uh, for those robust uh, responses. Of course, uh, a lot to deal with, and hopefully those short-term uh, interventions can be made uh, specifically for the manufacturing sector. That was Philippa uh, Rodseth. She's the Executive Director at the Manufacturing Circle.